So far, when we've been editing, we've been adding our clips to our timeline and trimming them in the timeline by going to the end and trimming them to get rid of the end or to get rid of the beginning, however we want to do. Now, this is not the most efficient way of editing. Yes, it works, so I can pull this back and I can keep pulling this clip back until I find the place that I want to finish. You can see I get great feedback in the video preview monitor, so I can say finish there with the, the nose up of the boat. And when I'm clip trimming a clip, even though that clip, the, the cursor isn't over it, I still get a feedback. So if I was to trim the clip before, I still get feedback and I can work out where I want it to finish. And then I can move clips around. Now, this is one way of working, but I'll be honest with you, it isn't the most efficient way of working. There are easier and better ways of working than this because this way we're forever fiddling around in the timeline. Now, there will come a time when we're doing what's called a fine cut and we will want to go in and actually edit the way that we're doing our video. But initially, we want to do something called a rough cut and a rough cut wants to work through all our clips, select the bits of the clips that we want with an in point and an out point, ignoring the rest and dropping just the selected portions onto the timeline one after the other after the other to create a rough cut and then we go in and we make fine adjustments so you do a rough cut and then you do a number of fine cuts until you get to the final version which we often refer to as a picture lock where you say that's it the end of the story and then you export it and go of course picture lock never happens until your client says it's acceptable and clients can give a picture lock and turn around and say actually do you mind making a change afterwards and as long as you charge them extra money for it that's fine but if they're not prepared to pay, once you've got picture lock, you ought to have it in writing saying, at picture lock, any changes after this will cost you more. But that's just a side issue, a little bugbear of mine. Okay, so this is one way of working, and it's not a really efficient way of working. Ideally, what we want to use is this window up here, which is called the trimmer window, to select the in and the out points of the clips that we want, and then just drop them one after the other onto a timeline until we've built up our rough cut, ready to do further fine editing processes with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all the clips in these particular ones here, select them all and hit delete. They've all gone. And now I want to get clips into this trimmer window. So I'm going to start off with this one, which is Boat into Harbour, and we'll just trim it in our trimmer window. What you can do is you can right click on it and you can go to Open in Trimmer. And it will actually open it in the trimmer window. And there it is ready to work on. But I'm just going to show you there is another way, which is actually my preference. If you want to get rid of something that's in here, you can either go to None or alternatively with it selected, you can click this little X, Remove Current Media from Trimmer. Or alternatively, you've got clear trimmer history as well. So you've got these two little lock buttons here to get rid of things. This particular button is to sort the trimmer history if you need to. Or if you want to see the trimmer on an external monitor, I've just clicked that and I'm seeing it now on my side window as well. You can't see it because I I'm only, can only record one screen at a time. So I'm going to get rid of that. That's not in there. And I'm going to introduce you to your options. So your options and preferences. So when you go to options at the bottom, you've got preferences. Now these are advanced. And we don't want to fiddle with many of them. There's not that many that people want to play with, but there are a few that I like to change from default. One of them is this automatically open last project on startup. I, generally speaking, don't like it to open up the last project because I want to choose which project it's going to open up. Sometimes people like that, sometimes they don't. Turn that off is my preference. Most of the other things you don't really need to, to, to check or play with. One useful little function, by the way, if ever you're working with a camera and you're forever importing two channels and you've used one channel as a microphone and one channel as an ambient and you're not really using it as stereo, but you want to use it as dual mono, notice this little option here, import stereo as dual mono. That's a really useful little option. So you can import a clip and it'll instantly break the channels up into two mono channels, which are easier to deal with. I'm going to leave that unchecked at the moment. I did mention before that if you want to change your spacebar so that it can play and stop or play and pause, notice that it says make spacebar and F12 play pause instead of play stop. So if you want to use your spacebar and you want it to pause when you push stop, rather than go back to the beginning all the time, you can enable that one. However, I would encourage you to really get used to using the JKNL keyboard shortcuts. Um, however, the one that I really want to show you is this one here. It says double click on media items to load them into the trimmer instead of tracks. So if I click that one and I apply, then 
I'm going to click OK. There are obviously more things to this, but we're not going to go through all of those now. Click OK. Now when I double click a clip, rather than dropping it straight into my timeline, it takes into the trimmer window. And to be honest with you, 9 times out of 10, maybe even 99 times out of 100, you don't want all the clip. It's too long. Good video is actually lots of fast moving or, or small clips. You don't want long rambling clips going on and on and on. You just want to take the bit that's going to keep people's interest and then move on to the next clip and move on to the next clip. So what we can do is we can use J, K and L to actually play through this particular item. So L playing forwards, K to stop. But we can also use I and O, in and out, to specify the in and the out points that we want to use. Notice you can also use the icons here in and out and notice that there is another alternative as well the square brackets will do an in and an out point okay so I'm going to use L and K to play and stop and I'm going to use I and O which if you look at them are directly above J K and L this is specifically designed to make things really quick and I'm going to play them and I'm going to add my in and out point so L to play and I'm looking for probably when some land starts to appear so as the camera starts to pan around, just seeing the boat at sea is a little bit boring. So land is beginning to appear, so I'll do my eye there. And then the harbour wall appears, and just before the boat slows down, so just after that wave comes over the top, which I've seen before, wave comes over and O. Oh, and then K to stop. Now if I want to play this clip, if I select it, select this, this grey area here, double click it it actually makes it blue and then when I hit my space bar it's going to play just that area that I've selected so I can double check to see if I'm happy with how it looks and yep that looks fine got the castle in the background the wave that's come over the top that looks great so now I'm ready to put it to my timeline now I'm going to do something called a three-point edit now, what do I mean by a three-point edit? What I mean is I have selected two points on this clip. I've selected an in point and an out point. And now I need to specify a third point for where I want this clip to go. And at the moment, that is here where the cursor is. So if my cursor is at 30 seconds here odd, if I were to drop it in the clip, I've done a three-point edit. So I've done an in point and an out point for the clip and an in point in my timeline for the clip and what I'm effectively saying is I want the clip to start here and carry on going for however long the clip actually lasts so I'm not specifying a fourth point I'm not saying it's got to fit into this particular area I'm saying start here and go on for as long as the selection I've made will go onto the timeline however Vegas also gives us other options one says do you want to go forward from the cursor or do you want to go up to the cursor? And if the cursor is in the middle of your timeline like this, you have both of these options. Notice keyboard shortcuts A and Shift A. However, if I move it to the beginning of my timeline, I obviously don't have the up to because there's no room, but I do have the after. So when I've got my in and my out point on this particular clip, all I need to do is hit A, and I've created a three-point edit. Because I said, here's your in point, here's your out point, and it had to start here and my cursor is now locked to the end of that clip so if I load another clip by double clicking and I choose my in and my out points this time I might scrub through I know there's a camera move I want to avoid in fact let's have it before the camera move so let's do my in point right at the beginning so I and O is going to be before the camera so just there O there's three point edits I've specified two of my three points and if I hit A or I click this icon here it will put it where my cursor is so if I do a drop it on the timeline straight afterwards and this is the way you go through all your clips one by one by one choosing the ones that you want so let's do one more castle pan I know that this castle pan doesn't last long before it starts the camera starts moving I don't want the camera moving in fact I want it just before that dog appears so just there dog appeared just here and I could just do O at this stage O and it's done an in and out point at that one and then A again drop it on my timeline and I'm building up a timeline I'm building up a rough cut that I can play really quickly now when an item is selected such as this one here if I use the brackets keys once the timeline is selected so that's the square bracket keys I can actually go 
So if I make sure my timeline is selected, so actually click in the timeline and I do the bracket key, you can see that I can go between my events and it will go between those events and I can make sure I'm at the end of the appropriate event where I need to be. However, if you noticed, when I still have my trimmer selected, when I actually hit that bracket key, what I did was simply change the in and the out point. So just make sure you've got the right panel selected. And this is where learning the keyboard shortcut Alt-0 really makes it a lot quicker to be able to make sure you've got your timeline selected. Okay, so that's adding clips using the trimmer. There is more to the trimmer. And in the next tutorial, we're going to look at four-point edits. Mm -hmm.